note real quick before the video starts if you guys enjoy it remember to leave a like and if you want to see more like it remember to subscribe anyway today we are back but we're not on miner's haven we're actually on a game called mechanical ascension i'm sure some of you are familiar with this game but i'm sure a lot of you okay i cool right at the start of the video god damn it I'm sure a lot of you are not familiar with this game, so essentially Mechanical Ascension is a sandbox tycoon. It's very much similar to Miner's Haven in that you have mines, upgraders, furnaces. It works in a lot of the in a lot of the same ways. There are a lot of significant differences, some interesting things about this game that I'm going to talk about that kind of set it apart, and Mechanical Ascension X is a follow-up game that is going to be releasing very soon. By very soon, I mean tomorrow. I'm going to be live-streaming it when it first comes out. It'll be pretty fun. I'll have an exclusive code. It'll be a fun new game to check out while we wait for Miner's Haven updates to come around, so I hope to see you guys there, and I hope to see you guys watching the videos on it that I post. Before it actually comes out, though, I wanted to take a look back at Mechanical Ascension and sort of reflect on this game and talk about Mechanical Ascension. X and some of the features that it's going to have. Now there are a couple of main features that Mechanical Ascension has that I wanted to talk about and sort of look back on because a lot of the features in this game are features that are in Miner's Haven right now, but they were added to Mechanical Ascension way before they ever saw Miner's Haven. A lot of the core features and gameplay elements of Miner's Haven now were things that existed in this game long before they were even considered for Miner's Haven. Of course there are a couple significant differences outside of that that I want to talk about. The most significant one probably is the fact that this game has infinite prestiges which are essentially the equivalent of sacrifices and in this game they function a lot more like regular rebirths do in miner's haven sacrificing isn't nearly as significant in this game because you can do it as many times as you want i'm up to 12th right now and there's a pool of items that you can get it's rng based you'll get random items it has a reroll station here where you can if you get a bad item you can just get rid of it use the game's premium currency, and you can get a different item. And it's not particularly better or worse than how Miner's Haven does it. I like how MH does its sacrifices. I don't think an infinite system like that would fit that game, but I think in this it kind of works, and it's just different. It sort of gives you different goals and things to go for, and it even allows for different compounds for different prestige items. And compounds are this game's evolution equivalent. And we'll talk about evolutions and fusions in a little bit, but there are a few compounds of different prestige items that exist, which I think is pretty cool. Another thing that this game has is different difficulty settings, another thing that probably wouldn't work particularly well in regular Miner's Haven, but in a different game it actually works out quite well. As you can see here, there is an easy leaderboard, normal, hard, and nightmare. Now, I don't know the exact differences of each difficulty setting, but I believe it mostly just changes ore values and how fast you're actually able to make money, so it'll it'll slow down or speed up the game by a lot. I believe it also affects your your rebirth price and your prestige life requirement. Rebirthing in this is called reincarnating, but it's it's just rebirthing. That's It's the same mechanic in this game. But yeah, you've got that, and then there's a lot of smaller other differences in this game. There are different, like, metas, there are different portables. A, a lot of the portables in this game are actually rebirth items, which I think is pretty nice. And there's just a lot of small differences in how this game plays, just in terms of upgraders and the stuff added to it. A lot of it is very similar to Miner's Haven, but a lot of it functions in pretty different and in interesting ways, in my opinion. Now, like I mentioned before, this game has a lot of features that are present in Miner's Haven right now, and it had them way before Miner's Haven got them. For example, this game had the fusion and evo crafting system, where you just go into one menu, you have to craft fusions and evos from here, and it had it way before MH did. Of course, you've got your compound items, your compound prestige items, like the, the star's birth turns into the star's zenith, which is pretty cool. And... Another small difference in this game is that evos and fusions were a lot easier to craft. All of them stacked with each other, so you could use a lot of different items to get some pretty high multipliers. And again, those aren't necessarily bad things, they're just different. They, it makes the game play in pretty slight different ways when you're actually going through the lives. But the main takeaway from this is that it had fusion and evo crafting way before MH did. It also had salvaging in the same menu. You've got the salvage menu, and it works in a similar way where you can get rid of certain items that you own. But in this game, when you salvage stuff, you can get different items, boxes like the death boxes that I've got. You can get Cosmite, which is the premium currency as well. So salvaging in this game is way more valuable. And it's particularly good because of the prestige mechanic, because whenever you're about to prestige, once you reach that life requirement, you can just go and get rid of literally every single item you have, and you can get a lot of stuff from it. Another thing that this game had, similar to what Miner's Haven has now, is a tier called Corrupted Items, which are 
essentially shiny items. They're very rare, different looking versions of existing items. They work a little bit differently in this game. I don't believe I have any right now to actually show, unfortunately, but they're, they're essentially the old versions of shinies. They're prestige proof, so you got them back whenever you prestige, so they were, they were essentially just prestige proof reincarnation items. They're rare, they're collectible. They didn't look particularly great, if I remember correctly. Their, their aesthetics weren't uh, super appealing, but it's another thing that existed in this game that now, in a similar form, exists in Miner's Haven. This game also has shadow items, which are effectively ultra-rare reborns. These are super rare items that you can get. These are prestige-proof in this game as well, but they're effectively ultra-rare items, super hard to get. You have to grind for a while to try and get them. I happen to have one, the Discharge Amplifier, which I think is one of, if not the best mines in the game. This game did Ultra Rare Reborns before Miner's Haven did, and it also had a tier called Cataclysmic Items, which are the, the old versions of Enchanted Items before Miner's Haven had Enchanted Items. I feel like with a lot of these, I'm just repeating myself and saying, this game had this, which is the old version of Miner's Haven stuff, but that's what it is. This game was just kind of ahead of the curve on a lot of the different features like that that would end up coming to Miner's Haven. This game did a lot of them first, and it has a lot of, a lot of similarities now to Miner's Haven even though back when it was first around, it actually did them first and was kind of almost revolutionary in that regard. Yeah, back for the time, this game was actually pretty different. It had a lot of unique features. It still has some unique stuff in prestiging and how some of the systems work. Just some of the small little gameplay details that affect things a little bit. And before I switch over to Mechanical Ascension X and talk about that, I want to show off this setup right here. Now this is the setup that I just had saved in my layouts from back when I was playing this game still. This is, this really just kind of shows you the age of this game. I, I was playing it back in like 2018-ish times, and this was what I would have considered pretty solid setup for back then. Just kind of goes to show how far things have really come, because nowadays this is a horribly slow and ineffective setup. But yeah, this is what they used to look like. You've got some items. It, it did the portable thing first. It has it has the Luminosity, which is like an AoE portable item. It did that way before MH ever had any of those. And this game just has like a lot of small things like that. It had the, it had scientific notation money displays before Myers Haven did. Like there's so many small little quality of life things and stuff like that. Just different types of items that ended up coming to MH that this game did first. And I'm not saying, of course, that this game stole from Miner's Haven, or that Miner's Haven stole from this game. I'm not saying that at all. Mostly just pointing out the similarities and showing how this game was different back in the day, and how it handled some of its stuff, and how over the years Miner's Haven has almost evolved to be more similar to this game. I mostly just wanted to reflect on reflect on the old times of this game, though, because I played it quite a bit. I enjoyed it quite a lot. I wanted to look back on it before we switch over to Mechanical Ascension X, which is a more modernized version of this, which is going to have some pretty interesting and new features. Look at that, E94, and this is like an okay setup. Uh, hit the reincarnation, and look at that, we got we got cool stuff. Alright, anyway, let's uh, let's switch over to Mechanical Ascension X now. And if you're wondering how I'm actually playing MAX right now, the, the, the reason I'm able to play it is just because I have early access. It's not out quite yet, it'll be out tomorrow on the 11th. It's going to be available in paid access, 25 Robux for you guys to, to check out. It's still going to be a very early build and early version of the game, which is why it's going to be in paid access, but it's going to be it's going to be playable for most people. I haven't actually completed the tutorial in this yet, so I've got the I've got the good nerdy gnome down there. But yeah, now that we're in MAX, I want to talk about some of the features that'll be in this game that'll be coming here that you'll be able to to experience. One small detail which is shared with the original mechanical ascension is ore limit changing. You can manually change how many ores you want to be able to be on your base. Nothing major, but it's something that I just remembered looking down at this UI, and it's a pretty helpful little extra addition. This game is going to have a lot more than just that, though, to set it apart. I also am just now realizing I'm starting to sound a little bit like a page chill for this game, like I'm advertising it or I'm sponsored by it. I'm not. I, I am just genuinely excited for it. I'm going to be playing it, and I wanted to make a video about it, and I also happen to be friends with one of the main devs, which helps a little bit. Not sponsored, though. Not sponsored. No monetary gain from this. I'm just excited about the game, and I want to get you guys excited about it, too, because I think it'll be pretty good. 
Anyway, of course, the first thing that this game has, it's similar to Mechanical Ascension in that we'll be able to do infinite amounts of prestiges. There will be a set pool of different prestige items, the re-rolling mechanic is back, the, all, the UI for that is not finished yet and all that, but the old functionality of prestiging from the original Mechanical Ascension will return in this game. One thing that I'm very excited about that is going to be coming to this game is some form of challenge system. There will be actual genuine challenges Basically like what I suggested in my third sacrifice video, and I I didn't even know that they were going to be coming into this game until today. But I made that suggestion, talked about that, completely unknowing that they were going to just be a thing in Mechanical Ascension X, and I'm very happy about that. Just having more stuff to go for, different challenges to kind of change the way you play the game, I'm very excited for it. Another thing that this game has going for it is going to be optimization, because it's being built from the ground up. It's not running on five-year-old spaghetti code. It is... A brand new game, newly optimized, a lot of the uh, more efficient ways of handling things. And it's going to run a lot smoother than Miner's Haven does. So if you're someone who struggles to run Miner's Haven, but you still want to get your fix on a sandbox tycoon style game, this might be the go-to for you because it's going to run way better. Another thing that's something that I've been suggesting for regular Miner's Haven for ages that this game is going to be getting is more consistent updates. There will be weekly updates for this game, small weekly updates that bring a couple of items, maybe some new features and small changes. This is another thing I'm extremely excited about. I'm super happy that this game is going to be getting more consistent updates. Very, very good stuff. Speed meta is not going to be a prevalent factor in this game. There's not going to be a speed meta. Hydraulic items completely removed. There's no hydraulics at all. Cannons are hard-coded to make sure that you can't use them for speed because ores that are in the air can't be upgraded. You can only use certain things with cannons. They fill a very specific role. So I know a lot of people aren't particularly big fans of speed meta. I know I'm not a fan of how fast things are going right now, and this game aims to try and take that out, and I think it does a pretty good job of that, or at least seemingly it will. Obviously, we're not at the point where we can fully know yet, but, you know, there are plenty of things in place to kind of slow things down, and I think this game is definitely going to be a little bit slower paced than Miner's Haven. It's also got its own twist on shiny items. In this game, shinies are called ultras, and they're actually going to be worth going for outside of just the recolor and them looking cool, because they're actually going to have small stat changes. They're going to have small stat changes. They're not going to be hugely different, but they're going to be enough that they would be worth using over the regular version. Mines are going to be slightly more valuable. Upgraders are going to do a little bit more, and it's just going to make things a little bit better overall. They're also going to be prestige proof and work in a similar way to what people have suggested for Shinies and Miner's Haven, where once you're able to get the item that you have the shiny version of, or the ultra in this case, you actually just get the item back. Either when you get the item from rebirthing or just when you reach the life. I don't remember which one it is because I'm dumb and forget, but it's one of those. The game has its own OST as well. The music that you're listening to in the background of this video is actually one of the original tracks made for this game, which is very cool. Oh yeah, it's also got the different difficulties in this as well. There's leaderboards for a bunch of different things, and you can also check your own stats on each of the leaderboards. So it's got like own, your own player stats. It allows you to, to check in and see how you compare against everyone else in the game where you don't have to be on a leaderboard. Kind of like what I suggested in my third sacrifice video. You know, one of the things that, that I've noticed about this game is that it has a lot of the suggestions that I had for third sacrifice just implemented already in the base game. Yeah, those are those are the main things that are that are publicly known right now about the game. There's obviously a lot of stuff behind the scenes that's being planned and being worked on that can't be shared right now that is gonna come in the future, but those are the main things that are public that set this game apart. I, I really want to hammer home some of the differences because I know a lot of people have sort of stigmas against these Miner's Haven clones, as a lot of people call them, but the games the games play very differently, and I think this game is going to have a lot of really nice quality of life things, like the performance, the different ultras, different prestiging method, which at the very least is going to change up the pace and change how the game is played a little bit. Stuff like customizing your ore limit, a custom OST, player stats, weekly updates, no speed meta, all of that good stuff. It's, 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 it's seeming really promising right now. It, it's got a lot of good stuff going for it. I'm really excited for the game. Again, I'm going to be streaming it on the 11th. I hope to see you guys there. I think it'll be really fun. Of course, again, the game's going to be in a pretty early stage, so I'm expecting it not to be perfect, but I think it'll still be fun to play and fun to check out, get to play with some of you guys who are able to get into the early access as well. And yeah, I think it's just going to be a fun time. I'm probably going to be making some videos on the game, even if nobody watches them, because I think I'm going to be playing it a lot and having fun with it regardless. So basically, what I'm saying is... Please watch it. I'm going to be making the videos anyway. So basically what I'm saying is, fuck you, I'm making the content that I want to make. 
I'm gonna leave both of those in, I think. Those are both staying in the video. Yeah, I think that's all I got for you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. I appreciate you clicking on something that's not Miner's Haven. If you made it this far into the video, you are a real homie. You're probably one of, like, three people who made it here, so I really, really appreciate it. Thank you, guys. I assume most of the people here are already in or aware of the Discord and my Twitter and all of that, so... Yeah, I'm just gonna head out. Thanks for watching. Love you, hate you, all that good stuff. Bye bye baby.